Hello and welcome to another landscape photography editing tutorial. Today I'm gonna take this raw file and turn it into a picture like that, while explaining you in depth what I do, what adjustments I use and why I do them etc. So what you see here is the view from the Swiss mountain Riggi. It's a very beautiful place. If you go to Switzerland, I definitely suggest you to go to Riggi. It's not one of the very tall and big mountains, but it's beautiful if you would just like to hike and take pictures, because there's a lot of different subjects. Anyways, let's get started with the editing. As you surely know, my usual workflow is just to bring up the shadows, bring down the highlights. You can see here, bringing up the shadows, we get so much detail in the shadow region. But of course, because I don't want it to look so washed out, I'm gonna go down with the blacks, so we get back a little bit of contrast. I'm gonna hold down the ALT key to see wherever the blacks are clipped. You don't really have to worry about blacks clipped because it doesn't really matter. However, with the whites, you just want to make sure that you don't clip any whites. Now, usually I would do that, so very harsh that no whites in the picture are clipped whatsoever. However, this sun right here is kind of overexposed already because I've messed up the exposure. Or rather, I would have had to shoot HDR in order to get the sun non-overexposed. But it's really not a big deal that the sun right here is overexposed, so I'm just gonna bring up the whites, disregarding the sun, and just stop as soon any of the other parts of the picture gets overexposed. So that looks pretty good already. Let's go to contrast, and I definitely think I'm gonna add some contrast. I'm not really sure how much. Actually, let's go to color temperature first, because it's way too blue. So I'm definitely gonna add some here. I don't want it too much, just so we have a little bit of blue here to the left. I think that works pretty well. And let's go to tint while we're at it right now as well. I'm definitely gonna add a little bit of magenta. It's kind of a bit too greenish looking for a sunset photo. So just something like that for now. And then let's go back to contrast. Let's see how much I wanna add. I think around 30 or something like that works pretty well. Then down here to clarity, I have no idea what I wanna do here. I think, do I wanna go plus? I think actually I'm gonna leave it at zero because I don't really want a very harsh look like that in my picture. And I kind of like the soft look in the background, you know, fading away. So I think I'm just going to leave that at zero for now. Then vibrance and saturation, I'm just going to leave that how it is and going to mess with that later if I have to. But for now, let's go to the tonal curve and bring up the highlights. As you can see, it kind of overexposes the sky, but it definitely adds a lot of dynamic. However, because the sky already is so bright, I'm not going to add too much here. I'm just going to leave it around there. Then two lights. Let's see. I think I'm going to go down with the lights a bit. Then darks. I'm definitely going to go down with the darks, just so we have a little bit more contrast again. And the shadows. I feel like I'm going to leave them around zero. Then down here at the HSL tool, I mean, it's a really optional tool, you don't really have to use it, but it definitely can have a difference in your picture. So if you want to use it, just grab this little pinpoint right here and drag it over a color you want to change, and then drag the mouse up and down, and just stick with whatever color looks best. Let's see here, so I've already changed the blues, so I like that one a bit better. Then let's go to the oranges. I think I might bring that a bit more towards the reds. And as you can see, with using this little pinpointer, you can just go to a color and it will change all the colors in the picture. Meaning if there's blue and purple mix, it will change the color, you know, according to how much blue and purple is in there. Rather, if you would just go to the color slider directly, you would just change the one color, you know, even though the color you see in the picture may be a mix out of two or three colors. 
So I'm just gonna grab the little pinpointer here for the saturation tool as well. Do the same thing as I did before. I think I might add some blues here. Let's see with the orange. I think I'm just gonna leave the orange at zero for now because I think I'm gonna add some some what's it called split toning later in terms of the green saturations I think a little bit of plus would work quite well something like that and let's go lastly to the luminance I might even bring that down a little bit with the blue luminance just a tiny bit then in terms of orange I don't really want to change anything there and let's see with the greens I think I might bring up the greens just a little bit. Alright, so we're done with the HSL tool, let's go down to the split toning, and you know, split toning is really a very powerful tool, especially for sunsets, because it adds color instead of just, if you would mess around with the vibrance and saturation, if you would move that slider up there, it would just increase the color that is already there you know it doesn't really add any color it just increases the effect and the look it has on the color that is already existent so anyways I'm gonna go to highlights here and I'm gonna play around with the color first so you can see it's way too much saturation but I'm definitely gonna fix that in a second just wanna make sure that I get the right color I think I'm gonna go with orange here, some mixture between orange and yellow, I think that looks pretty good, and then let's bring down the saturation to around, you see how what, what the drastic impact it has on your picture, especially on the foreground here, I really like that when I bring up the saturation in terms of bringing in more orange into the picture. I don't really like it in the background so much, but I can fix that later. So let's stop messing around and just go with around that. That looks pretty good. Now down here at the shadows, this pretty much does the same as highlights. You just want to play around with these. The shadows tend to not have such a big impact into your photo, but it's still worth to try out. I think I'm gonna go here with a bit more orange towards the reds and add some in the shadows just a tiny bit I really don't want to overdo it I think I'm gonna go there and down here at the detail tool by the way I usually cut like every few seconds because I can't manage to speak in a row but this video like I've been speaking for like five minutes in a row without making any mistakes so that's a personal record anyways let's go to sharpening um, before I do anything in sharpening let's zoom in one to one you can already see a lot of noise there but we're gonna take care of that in a second so let's see if there's any sharpening needed and I think a little bit of sharpening could help out for this photo so let's add some here you definitely don't want to overdo that otherwise it looks completely unnatural and completely fake so I think I'm gonna stick with around 50 55 here then you want to zoom out again put the masking slider to the right hold down the alt key and everything that's white is going to be sharpened so you want to make sure that the sky and if you have like lakes or anything you don't want sharpened in your picture is completely black because you don't want to sharpen anything without any texture that would just introduce noise so I think I'm gonna leave masking around there and that looks pretty good then let's zoom in back to one again one to one again and go to noise reduction because as you can see we've raised the shadows so much I think I shot this at what I so actually I so hundred but it was a kind of darkish scene so you definitely can see a lot of noise here so let me not erase the noise reduction I think let's see here I usually don't really like the noise reduction because it kinda makes the whole picture look a little bit more plasticky but if you have too much noise you definitely have to because otherwise it will look just terrible 
So I think I'm gonna stick with around 30 here. I don't wanna make it too plasticky looking. That almost looks like a painting here. So let's go back to around 30, 25. So as you can see here, the trees have a lot of sensor noise in them. A lot of purple and green sensor noise all over the pictures, especially in the shadows. So I definitely want to get rid of them by just pressing this color slider and sliding it to the right. This is really a great tool. It doesn't really have a lot of impact on your overall color. It really just affects the very ugly sensor noise. So let's bring that to the right until I can't see anymore. That works pretty well actually. Let's zoom out again. And yeah, I definitely like that. Then down here at lens corrections, two things I always do is go to enable lens corrections. Choose my lens, in this case the Canon 18 to 55 kit lens. So you can see here it removes all of the distortion as well as vignetting. But if you've seen any of my previous videos, you will know that I like the vignetting actually. So I'm gonna bring that down to zero. It really helps to give more attention towards the center of the picture. Then let's go to color and remove chromatic aberration. This will just get rid of all of the green and purple fringing on the edges, on the high contrast edges of your picture. Then let's go down here to effects and add some more vignetting. However, I'm not sure how much I want to add in this particular photo. I think I'm, done, I'm not going to do that too much here. Maybe around minus 5. Um, by the way guys, you know, usually I cut these videos or I cut my conversations a lot because I do a lot of misspeaking, you know, typos in words, so to say. So, do you guys mind these or would you rather have me cut them out and just give a very clean and very fast paced video, unlike this one? So let me know that in the comments down below. Then down here at the camera calibration, you know, you probably want to play around with these, this profile right here. This will just uh, change the color and the contrast ratio of your picture. And as you can see, that looks absolutely terrible for this shot. So let's play around with these. Camera neutral doesn't look bad. This one is a bit too bright in the highlights. And the camera standard really has a bit too much yellowish touch. So I'm definitely gonna stick with dope standard for this photo. But again, if you would like to play around with these, you definitely can. Especially if you're still learning, that can have a huge impact. Then down here at the sliders, this will just change the primary color of your picture. Unlike the HSL slider up here, for example, if you would change the blue hue here, it might have a big impact on your greens and other colors as well. So let me play around with these sliders. Shadow tint at first. I think I might go a little bit to the greenish, just to get rid of some of the color cast in the foreground then to red primary. Let's bring that down and up as well. Let's see what works best here. It's kind of laggy probably because I'm recording and uh, you know the task of moving around these sliders is a very CPU in intensive in itself and additionally to that I'm recording a video so it's probably going to lag but hopefully the audio is fine. Anyways, I'm just playing around with the different red saturations right now. I think I'm gonna add some here. Let's go around to the green primary. I think I might go minus with that a little bit, just to give a little bit more color cast and a bit more difference into the greens, you know. These trees really change in the foreground right here. Here's at zero and here's at minus 16. I definitely like that a bit better. Down here at saturation. I'm not really sure what I want to do there. Let's see. I think I'm gonna leave that at zero, so I'm just gonna reset that by double clicking on it. And let's go to hue. I think I go minus with the hue just a little bit. Or am I? Let's see the zero again. And here's at minus. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna go minus just a little bit. Then down here at the saturation, the last slider of this tool. I think I'm gonna go plus with the blue primary saturation. And as you can see, it really enhances the color in the greens as well, not just the blues. So we're already done with the global adjustments. So now what I'm gonna do is local adjustments. And a thing that I really don't like in this picture is that the sky is very evenly colored, you know? And I really want to have a variation in color in the sky. So I'm just gonna grab a graduated filter right here and add some color temperature towards the blues as well as add some blue, some light blue probably in the color. And then I'm just gonna grab uh, this gradient filter and drag it over the sky here on the left portion because I kinda want the left side to be a bit more bluish rather than very warm. I want the, you know, the sun to be very warm but this one kind of to a bit more blue. So let me just adjust the blues right here course that's a bit too much how it is right now I think I like that pretty good and then let's create a new one and just drag it over the very left part of the image just like that adjust this one as well and I think maybe a little bit of less color saturation so I already like this picture very much but I definitely think there could be a little bit more variation in terms of color in near the sun so I'm just gonna grab a radial filter here and kind of drag it over the sun here. Make sure you have the feather to 100 and you invert the mask. Then I'm just gonna reset the blues and add some oranges here in the shot. Something like that. Then let's reset the blues here and the color temperature as well. And you can see that definitely changes the color Let's add some saturation and see how that looks. Not really too good. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to add any saturation. So I think I'm going to leave that there and create another radial filter. And just drag it over the top right portion of the sky here. And kind of change this color as well. Maybe a little bit more towards the blues. Just so there's a touch of blue. Let's see here in the color, I think I might even go towards the purplish pinkish color and just add some of that there. So there's even more variation in terms of color in the picture. Let's just bring that down just a little bit again. Alright, so I think the picture overall looks pretty good already. Let's just try and grab a graduate filter and put it over the sky here. And this time I just want to play around with the exposure because that might look a bit better if I bring down the exposure a bit. That's a bit too much so let's bring it down just, just a tiny bit. And I definitely think there's a little bit more contrast and a little bit more texture in the clouds which I really like. I could play around with contrast as well, just for this gradient filter. Maybe something like that. Here's without any gradient filters, and here's with. So you can see how much more dynamic and how much more diversity in terms of color we've added to the picture. Okay, so I think the last thing that I'm gonna do is add some dodge and burning because the foreground is kind of too boring in my opinion. So I'm definitely gonna add some color and some lighting variation there. For that, I'm gonna use the radial filter. Just grab a radial filter here and drag it somewhere around the picture, around the foreground like that. As you can see, the color is completely false for now. I'd rather add a warm color, so let's add some orange here, just so it looks like a bit of the sunlight reflected on the foreground, you know, spilled on the foreground, maybe not that much saturated, maybe a little bit of plus clarity, and then definitely plus exposure for this filter right here, then I'm just gonna right click duplicate, maybe drag it somewhere over there one more over here as well then one more over here in the foreground as well as you can see this is a bit too much saturation again 
So I'm gonna bring it down for this vulture. And you know, I'm gonna add a lot of these uh, plus exposure radial filters. And then at the end, I'm also gonna do some minus exposure filters. You know, just adding some dodge and burning and making the whole image a bit more complex. So I'm gonna speed up and I'll be right back. Alright, so I'm back after adding some dodge and burning, let's see here without any radial filters, and here's with. Definitely helps a lot to complexify the light and add some interest. So a last thing that I actually am going to do is grab a adjustment brush, reset everything for here now, make sure the feather is to 100, and then I think I'm gonna go towards the blue as well as towards the magenta a little bit in the tint maybe a little bit of plus exposure and then I'm just gonna paint over some spaces here on the lake let's see here there's definitely way too much right now but I'm gonna fix that in a second I really just wanna add some color into the lake as well so let's reset that kind of here that was a bit too much blue so I think that looks way better. Then let's go to color and add some pink there. Definitely not that much saturation. You know, just a touch so you don't even notice that I've added any color there. All right, so I think we've got a really, really cool picture here. So let's see where we started at with the raw file. So here's the picture without any adjustment, so you can see it's pretty cold, not much interest, not much color in the picture, really not very special. And here's what I've turned this into in just about 15 or maybe 20 minutes of editing. So I want to thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you would like to see more videos just like this one, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I upload one photography video every single day of the week. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, that really helps me out a lot. Keep taking awesome pictures, keep editing awesome pictures, have an amazing day.